So our work is about uh, predicate encodings. And predicate encodings are a primitive that are, is used to build predicate encryption. So I will start by explaining what predicate encryption is. In predicate encryption, there is a master authority. And there are some users. And this master authority provides secret key to the users. And every, every key is associated to certain value y that can be different for, for every user. And now in this setting, everyone is allowed to encrypt. And when you're going, where you're going to encrypt, you need to think of a, a value x. And what you produce is a ciphertext associated to, to this value x. And now, uh, so the requirement for predicate encryption is that only users that own a key that, such that a certain predicate involving x and the value y from the key is true will be able to decrypt. So for example, in this case, let's say only the first girl is able to decrypt. A very important requirement also for uh, predicate encryption is uh, collision resistance. So we want to avoid these two guys that individually cannot decrypt. We want to avoid uh, that they, they can combine their keys, for example, and be able to decrypt. So in, in general, no matter uh, how many keys you have, if none of the keys can individually decrypt the ciphertext, you should not uh, be able to decrypt. So more formally, uh, predicate encryption, uh, encryption consists of four algorithms that they set up. This is run by the master authority. Encryption, that from a message and certain value x produces a ciphertext for x. Key generation, this is run only by the master authority. As you can see, uh, this needs the master secret key. And this produces secret keys for the values y. And the encryption uh, only works uh, when the predicate is true. OK, so there has been uh, many works uh, in this area. Here I'm just showing some of them. But usually all of them fall into one of these problems. Uh, for example, some of them are for very sp uh, specific predicates. For example, the inner product. Uh, if you think of as f, uh, x and y as vectors, the inner product predicate says that the inner product between these vectors is 0, for example. So some of these works uh, are for very specific pre predicates, like inner product or Boolean formulas. Another work, uh, works uh, use very, very strong assumptions. Another other problems are like uh, composite order groups. They use composite order groups that are supposed to be not so efficient. And they usually have bad performance. Uh, what I mean by this is that, for example, you may need uh, several group elements to encode a very small policy. OK, so after all these works, two years ago, uh, these two words appeared. And basically, they allowed to to build a predicate encryption in, in, in a much simpler way. So for example, they, they allow to achieve flexible predicates. You are not restricted to use one of these specific predicates. They also use reasonable assumptions. You see k-lean in this one and the more general matrix th. They are defined over prime order groups. And yeah, they have flexible performance. So predicate encodings, as I said, are a building block to build predicate encryption. And predicate encodings are are used in this, in this work here. But these two works are modular frameworks. I'm going to explain a bit the idea of these two, two works. So they define a, a simpler encoding, a simple primitive, that they call predicate encoding in one case and per encoding in the, in the other work. And from this primitive, they can combine this with a compiler, and they can produce a fully secure predicate encryption for, for P. So as you see, this predicate. Uh, depends on this simple uh, primitive. So if you replace this primitive by another one for a different predicate, you automatically get a fully secure predicate encryption for a, for a new predicate. OK, so uh, currently there, there have been uh, some improvements on this area. And now we have like three, three kind of uh, different encodings with different predicates. So there is these tag-based encodings. And in this case, the compiler is supposed to be a bit more efficient. You can save some group elements. Uh, then we have uh, predicate encodings. Uh, it, this is what we are going to talk about in this talk. And pair encodings, which are supposed to be more, more expressive, because they, they uh, admit a computational notion of security, while these other two are only defined for an information theoretical notion of security. So some improvements have been done by Agrabal and Chase in this area. 
I will mention this later. But in this talk, we focus, fo focus on predicate encodings. And what, you, what we do in this work is, uh, first, we provide a new characterization of predicate encodings. We show uh, how to optimize them and provide some transformations, uh, like, for example, disjunction, conjunction, negation. So if you start from a predicate encoding for P1 and another one for P2, we show how to convert this into a predicate encoding for P1 and P2, for example. And then we show uh, new constructions out of these results. OK, in this work, we also consider the relationship. We investigate the relation between these primitives. And we, we show uh, how to transform tag-based encodings into predicate encodings and predicate encodings into per encodings. So we formalize basically this uh, folklore idea of the fact that per encodings are more expressive. So now I'm going to define uh, predicate encodings. This is the original definition. Basically, predicate encodings are five algorithms. Uh, the first one uh, stands for sender encoding. This is used in uh, encryption. This, uh, these two are called receiver encoding and key encoding. And they are used for key generation, and these two are used for decryption. So, OK, so these algorithms must satisfy three properties. The first one is they must be all linear in the last component. Second one is called alpha reconstruction, which basically says when, when the predicate is, is true, there is some equation that holds. And here you can think of alpha as a secret that allows you to decrypt. So basically, when this equation hold, you can compute alpha in the exponent somehow, so you will be able to decrypt. And the last property is called alpha privacy that says that when the predicate is, is false, these two distributions are identical. And if you, if you look here, uh, alpha appears only on the left, left hand side. So intuitively, this means alpha is information theoretically hidden. And intuitively, this is what, what allows you to argue security for this, uh, for this scheme. OK, so I'm going to redefine predicate encodings. And the first thing I'm going to do is to use matrix notation. Because since all the algorithms are linear, uh, you can, you can uh, think of uh, SE of XW as the product of a matrix uh, SE of X, this matrix times a vector W. So in particular, I will be talking about five matrices instead of five algorithms. So now let's see a, a very simple example, the predicate encoding for, for the equality predicate. So these five algorithms are predicate encoding for this predicate. How can we validate this? Well, we need to check the, all the properties. So first, let's check linearity. All the algorithms are linear. As you see, these three are linear because they are the identity in the last component. And these other two are also linear in the last component in W. Then we also need to check uh, alpha reconstruction. So when the predicate is true, we need these two equations to be satisfied. The second one is always satisfied. And when the predicate is true, x equals y. And therefore, these two things are also equal. So this is also satisfied. And alpha privacy is a bit more tricky, but it can be justified. So we need to show that these two distributions are identical when the predicate is, is false. And to do so, you can argue that when x is different from y, these two things are independent when you sample omega at random. So this is how you validate a predicate encoding. You, you check that it satisfies all the properties. So OK, so in matrix notation, this looks something like this. And I think we now we are ready to, to redefine uh, predicate encodings in the way we did in our work. So, we start from these five algorithms. And since I'm using matrix notation, we can forget about the linear, linearity property. So alpha restricted reconstruction, if we use matrices, becomes this equality between matrices. And alpha privacy uh, can be expressed as an algebraic property. So this is one of our main results. So this in uh, the fact that two distributions are identical, we showed that this is completely equivalent to uh, the existence of a solution of certain lin uh, linear system of equations. So this is, this is very useful because this algebraic property is what is going to allow us to prove all, all our further results in the, in the paper. Uh, OK, so I want to point out that the, you can call this W star uh, the witness 
for the fact that the two distributions are identical. Okay, another modification that I want to do is I would like to put these two algorithms inside here. And the reason is that uh, these two are used for decryption and you are only going to decrypt when the predicate is true. So yeah, we, we can do this. And the reason, reason, reason for this is that when these algorithms exist, you can compute them efficiently because you can basically apply Gaussian elimination here and you can compute these algorithms efficiently. So there is no need to consider them ex explicitly in the definition of the encoding. And why is this interesting? Because now look at this. We have two expressions that look kind of the same. They are in the same shape. We are saying in both, in both. there exists a vector satisfying a linear system. And in fact, these two conditions, we show that they are complementary. So that's why I'm using uh, complementary colors, uh, yellow and purple. Okay, so what I mean by this is that if this is the space of all pairs x, y, in this space, some of the points will be yellow, some of them will be purple, but what I mean is that this region cannot exist. Like Everything has to be either yellow or, pur or purple. And this is uh, useful because now, if we only have three matrices, we can, we can say that these three, three, ma three matrices, arbitrary matrices, induce a predicate encoding, a valid predicate encoding for the predicate, uh, you are in the yellow region. Why so? Because, okay, let's, let's see, when the predicate is true, you are in the yellow region by definition, and therefore you satisfy alpha reconstruction, because yellow is exactly alpha reconstruction. And when the predicate is false, since uh, you cannot be in the yellow region, you must be in the purple region, because they are complementary, but purple is exactly privacy. So basically, given any three matrices, we can say these three matrices induce a valid predicate encoding for this predicate. Uh, here I'm basically using the definition from the purple. I'm saying you are not in the purple. So to see an example, if we consider a pre previous encoding, now if we are given just these three matrices without any analysis, we already know that this is a valid predicate encoding for this predicate. The predicate that says you cannot build uh, uh, vector 0, 1 as a linear combination of these two vectors. And with a little analysis, you can show that this is equivalent to x equals y, as we, we knew from before. OK, I want to point out that in a work by Arabal and Chase from Eurocrypt this year, they consider a, a notion of encoding. So this is in the other setting of pair encodings. And they consider this notion of encodings that have uh, similar ideas to, to what we, we obtain from, from this implicit predicate. And the reason is that they build a compiler that takes uh, what they call non-trivially broken encoding and produces a, a predicate encryption scheme out of this under a Q-type assumption. And why is this similar? Because they, they also manage to relate the notions of reconstructability and privacy. So what they are doing is basically a non-trivially non -trivi broken encoding is basically an encoding that does not satisfy reconstructability. And basically, they argue that that is enough to, to have privacy. OK. So I'm just going to talk about uh, our transformations. So one of the things we consider is, how can we simplify predicate encodings? And the operation that we consider is, OK, we work with matrices. So if we start with these three encodings, what happens if we multiply by a matrix A and B, obtaining new encodings? So what we want to achieve is that the implicit predicate associated to these three matrices is preserved after this uh, multiplication. So in our results, we give the conditions on these matrices such that this uh, predicate is preserved. And why, why does this simplify? Because, for example, if uh, after m multiplying you get smaller matrices, this will be translated into performance uh, improvements and also saving of some group elements. And yeah, so you can also consider multiplying uh, from the right. And we also consider that case in, in our paper. And then I want to talk about uh, these transformations. So we provide generic transformations uh, for predicate encodings. I want to point out that uh, conjunction and dual, dual predicate. By the way, the dual predicate 
swaps the rows of x and y. So before, if you remember, secret keys were associated to values y and ciphertext to x. When you apply dual predicate, it's the other way around. So this can make the difference, for example, between secret key policy and uh, ciphertext policy AB, for example. So in the framework of pair encodings, Atrapadung already uh, shows some construction for uh, the conjunction and the dual predicate. And in our work, we show that our, our constructions are slightly more efficient. And just to give an intuition about how these transformations work, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about our negation. So basically, if we start from these three matrices, uh, we build negation like this. We, we create new mat matrices uh, as blocks of matrices using the, the previous one. So for example, the new SE matrix is going to be the original one transposed, then we have a block with minus the identity, and then we have a block of zeros. And by a similar, similar uh, way, we can build these three matrices, and thanks to our algebraic uh, characterization, we can show that this is, in fact, a valid predicate encoding for the negated predicate of the original one. Okay, I want to talk a bit about some applications. So, in fact, we managed to, to improve some existing encodings. For example, if we take this encoding from, from this work, uh, predicate encoding for Boolean formulas, and we transform it with a negation, and then we simplify it, we, we get a simpler encoding. Uh, by simpler, I mean uh, it has fewer group elements in the master public key. This will be translated into efficiency improvements. And also, the secret key uh, size is variable. So if, we, if you produce a secret key for a, a small formula, secret key will be small. And if the formula is large, secret key will be large. But I want to point out that in the original encoding, secret keys were always large, always the worst case scenario for the size. OK, there is a small problem here, which is uh, our, uh, our encoding is negated. So if you, if you want to to have a normal behavior, you need to negate uh, again. And we can do this negating also from the input. So for example, instead of uh, giving attributes A, B, C, and D to the users, instead of giving a user A and B, you give not C and not D. So you work with negated uh, attributes. And then instead of considering policies, you encrypt for negated policies. And if, if on top of this you are using an, our negated encoding, which is simpler, then you can, you can have the normal behavior. OK, so here I have some benchmarks. I don't know if you can see it properly. but So this is a comparison for a setup. So another thing that we, we consider is, uh, so now we can do dual policy AB in the framework of predicate encodings. So yeah, this was already considered in the other framework of pair encodings. And basically, we can do this by combining the conjunction and dual predicate uh, transformation. Another thing we can uh, achieve is uh, revocation. So we propose this method for revocation. Uh, you combine a predicate P1 for the actual access policies that you want to, to use with a predicate for broadcast encryption. And by using this, uh, you can revoke some users. So even if two users have the same secret key for the same set of attributes A, and this uh, set of attributes is supposed to be enough to decrypt certain ciphertext, you can still use this part to revoke one of them and not the other. And in fact, we show that with this mechanism for revocation, you can achieve uh, revocation for thousands of users in reasonable time. So here you have uh, four algorithms of an implementation of our, our primitive. OK, and then we have uh, other possible applications. You can read uh, more about this in the paper. But for example, we show also how to improve predicate encodings to support delegation. Uh, so this would allow you to, for example, take your secret key and weaken it into a less powerful one that you can delegate also. Or you can also use this to achieve a forward secrecy if you, just, if you destroy your original key. Yeah, so basically to sum up, uh, in this work, we consider this, uh, this framework of uh, encodings that uh, simplify the analysis of, of predicate encryption and construction. 
And we focus on predicate encodings. So we try to improve uh, their expressivity and efficiency. And to do so, we define an, uh, a new notion of predicate encodings. Uh, we combine them and provide transformations, optimizations, and yeah, we also give some possible applications of all these results. And we also consider the relations between these uh, encoding primitives. So I want to, to finish with uh, some questions. Uh, in fact, yeah, so for example, given a predicate encoding, a predicate, sorry, what is the minimal predicate encoding that you can build for it? Uh, or this one here, can we build predicate encodings for regular languages or unbounded AB? I'm not sure about this. These two can be achieved in the framework of uh, pair encodings. And a very interesting one is why does this negation trick uh, work? So as you saw, uh, we managed to improve uh, an existing encoding by negating it and simplifying. And this, this does not only work for the Boolean formula encoding that I mentioned, but it also works for, for example, for arithmetic spam programs. So the question is, why does it work? Also, you may consider uh, of negating twice, but if you negate twice, you always end up, uh, go, go back to the original encoding. So I would really uh, like to understand why does uh, negating simplifies uh, the encodings? It's an interesting question for me. Yeah, so this was all. Thank you very much for your attention.